So guys, pretty random way to start a video, but it is my pre-workout meal time. Um, I am in for deadlifts today. Now this is actually what I was talking about in the last video. So it's Wednesday now. From today, a week's time, I will be training with Big Laws. Obviously we will be doing a deadlift session, therefore that's why I have placed deadlifts in the middle of the week. So then it means that my recovery will be on point. I'll have had literally a week before I'm deadlifting again, because realistically it would have meant that I would have deadlifted on the weekend, deadlifted a week, basically from today on the weekend again and then obviously it would have been like three days until I was meant to be deadlifting obviously with the big man and realistically that would have then had a massive knock-on effect on my recovery I would have been pretty beat up going into the session and to be fair I just think like four days three four days anyway it's just not enough time for me to be able to recover and actually put a lot into that session so what we never done on the weekend there was deadlift I've now brought deadlifts to tonight. I've had to kind of properly switch into that deadlift mindset of training deadlifts in the middle of the week because I always wake up on a Saturday and I always know that that's my deadlift day. I always know I'm deadlifting then. My head's in the right space and there's a lot less on work-wise than that as well. Um, so I mean, I, I guess I give myself that bit extra time just to kind of recover for the full day, eat all my meals, keep hydrated, do everything I need to do and then pretty much go in and deadlift. But obviously we are deadlifting at night time tonight, um, I've had a busy day of work, um, it's been a productive day, don't get me wrong, obviously I've had all my meals and things like that, but it's just that little weird feeling that's like such a small thing there that's just like, oh my god I'm actually deadlifting throughout the middle of the week, but because I've not deadlifted in like 10 days, um, I'm not going to go in with any major expectations or anything like that, I'm just going to go in and see kind of what is um, there tonight, obviously how things are feeling throughout my warm up sets and realistically we're, we're still going to be on a deficit tonight as well, which is another thing just purely down to the fact that I will remember my belt tonight, I will also remember to charge my headphones up, so I need to remember to charge my headphones up, I need to remember my own belt, I need to remember, what else do I need to remember? We are in deficits regardless, but I don't care. Um, we are just going to go in, hope for the best, hopefully get a deadlift bar immediately, um, sink some pre-workout, get after some deficits, and hopefully it's going to be a good enough night. Like, as you'll remember, the last time I've done deadlifts, forgot my belt, um, so I had to just kind of use my little non-sport of Cardillo belt, which, again, did the job, but not for that day and what I was kind of going in with that day, so it was a, a, a little bit of a, not a put off, but it kind of got to me a little bit, but... Anyways, these things happen. What I'm also going to do is I will fire up a QA and a kind of box on my Instagram and we'll get a few questions. I'll try and cover them as much as I can on this video because, I mean, I've not brought a QA and a in ages as well. So I think um, if I can cover at least maybe four or five decent enough questions in this video, then that'll obviously account for a little bit of value for you guys to bring um, or you guys to take from this video. But yes, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. If you do enjoy it, then of course, guys, please do not forget to drop a like for me. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let's get on with some deadlifts. I do say that, but I always forget to mention what's in my meals. I know you guys know what's in them, but I mean, I always forget to kind of fill in them. So we've literally just got some chicken down here, sweet potato here, and greens here. Just broccoli, of course, guys, because that's the only vegetable that I actually do take in, apart from obviously my sweet potato and things like that. But realistically, that doesn't actually count. So pre-workout meal, um, I mean, this is pretty much the same meal um, throughout the day. So I mean, nothing really changes. Like my meals kind of two, three and four don't change obviously because that's like second meal, third meal, pre-workout meal and then I'll have a post-workout shake, post-workout meal and then another shake and then that'll be me done for the day. The main reason why we've got these on and the main reason, well to be fair, I don't necessarily need it on this leg but I do need it on this leg because I've got like a, a mad like, basically when I was deadlifting, cut my whole leg and it's like scabbed to the point where anytime I deadlift or anytime something touches it, it just rips it back off. So anytime that I've been trying to deadlift, I've not been able to keep the bar super tight to my shins and anybody that knows on deadlifts you need to actually be keeping it as like close to your shins as possible because any further away out from your shins your back ends up rounding your positioning goes off everything feels terrible so as well just kind of giving out like a little bit of advice for you guys to take value from this video is always keep it, always keep the bar as close to you as possible drag that bar up and down your shins whenever you deadlift and um, but i basically week in week out kept taking the scab off kept ripping it kept bleeding it was so sore to the point where it was just putting me off deadlifts 
um, and I've let it heal. It's had like 10 days to heal and basically we've came in tonight. Now just to be on the safe side, I've put a pair of single ply knee sleeves or I think they're actually elbow sleeves um, over where it is and obviously because the, fa the fact of me having that like OCD or not wanting to just put one on and not put the other on, I've put them both on just so it feels a little bit better and I don't let it take over my mind that I've only got one of them on but um, I'm not going to explain too much. We are obviously in for deadlifts, on deficit. Managed to get a deadlift bar straight away, which again is a massive, um, a massive bonus, I guess. But I'm feeling good. These are surprisingly not feeling the most awkward on the planet. So I mean, it's a win-win. But we're just going to crack on with deadlifts, and then I will catch up with you guys probably whenever they're done. I'm good. I'll do 220 for a single and then I'll do 260 single and then I'll do 300 after that. So, over deficit as well because I was losing power off the floor. So yeah. I was, I was getting so fucking weak off the floor, but it was because I was spending too much time at a really heavy weight off the floor and it was like I wasn't giving myself enough time to perform like actual working sets. I was wanting like a three to five set at 300 every week, do you know what I mean? And I just started losing power off the floor. so. Basically pulled away from that, moved to deficit, and I've been able to run deficits up to 280. I've done five at 280, but it was like on a shit day, so it was hence why I'm at it tonight, seven plates. So if I can take like a triple with seven plates, then I'll call deficits there. Do you know what I mean? Like finish deficits, move back to normal deadlift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Good. 
Oh, you fuck us. Good evening, my favourite people of YouTube. Now, back with another voiceover, but what I did say was obviously I was going to stick a Q&A box up on the old Instagram and gather up a few questions, try and get some decent ones that I can answer, maybe four or five decent ones, and that is exactly what I've did. Now, as you would have seen there, I was able to take the triple with seven plates aside, just to quickly go over that. It did pretty much um, feel very, very, very heavy, but at the same time, it felt very, very, very good. Uh, although you would have seen the first one and probably thought that was my one rep max, I had to um, remain very confident and stay confident throughout the full set and make sure that I took that triple before I took my straps off the bar, and that's exactly what I did. I was very happy with that set. This is arguably the strongest I've ever been in my whole entire life, purely because I've just pulled seven plates off of a deficit for a triple whilst being in this sort of condition, shredded, in very decent neck, and yeah moving on so question number one are supplements essential this is one of the things that i do actually have to answer quite a lot especially throughout some clients and obviously throughout my work with coaching regarding supplements and something that i do very much cover and everybody's set up with regards to coaching now supplements are more than definitely not essential you don't need them you absolutely do not need them i would more so favor somebody who has got a lot of experience and has been in bodybuilding or training or resistance training in general for a long time that I would push supplements more so towards them because they will benefit from a recovery standpoint over anything else now they, they do have their time in place they are beneficial and like I said they, they've got their specific place on where I would more so recommend them to but at the same time financially if you can't afford supplements every single month for a long period of time that means that it's going to benefit you a lot then do not go for them always opt for food first and that'll definitely be my my recommendation which will go out to every single client that i coach it's just always prioritize food first and then supplements come second but make sure that you are in a good enough position to be able to get supplements get the the most benefit out of supplements in which that means that you'll have to run them for a long period of time running something for a couple of weeks is definitely not going to get you anything out of it so they aren't essential but they are beneficial now next up do i eat the same meals every single day yes i do especially throughout prep throughout off season i will have a little bit more variety in my meals um and of course throughout the day i'll eat really whatever i kind of want so i mean i will obviously take in everything that i need to take in from a carbohydrate standpoint and a protein standpoint but at the same time i will also change up things so i'll have a lot of variety in my my diet but throughout contest prep i eat the exact same food um every single day whether that be uh, a leg day, a uh, shoulder day, back day, whatever day it is, I literally eat oats, sweet potato, chicken, white potato, I'll have my rapid recovery, I'll have berries, I think I've said oats, and my AGF shakes, and that's literally it. Obviously, I'll take my supplements, my HR lab supplements, but that is, that's it, I take the exact same stuff every single day. Moving on, what category do I compete in within bodybuilding? So, I have just came out with the junior category, I turned... 24 in March now I believe the juniors go up to 23 or it's just under 23 so obviously I took the year out the last time I did compete I was a junior so now because I've attained my DFAC pro status that'll mean that I will go into the DFAC Grand Prix which means that it is an open category so obviously there's no specific weight categories but whenever I go to the worlds that means I'll get put into a weight category so I'll be like for example in the middleweight or heavyweight pro division depending obviously on what my weight is on that specific day so that's that's what the way that the categories look now i'm in open men's categories just because i've pretty much just turned 24 so i can no longer compete as a junior there's no junior professional categories um i think because obviously they do kind of expect you to turn pro whenever you're maybe a little bit later on in your career when you've had quite a bit obviously more experience and things like that obviously you've been able to develop a good enough physique to gain a pro card so they don't have any junior professional categories but i am now in open men's and i will be competing in the dfac grand prix open and then i will be going on to compete in the dfac worlds which will obviously depend on what i weigh in on the day next up arm growth tips so i actually done a video which i believe is actually my recent video where i covered arm training in general and um, how much frequency does your arms need how much frequency can your arms recover from 
what should you do and what shouldn't you do with your arm training I suppose so what you could do is you could just literally jump back a video and um, it'll save me going over it here because I mean I don't really want to do that two videos in a row now I will just move on to this last one and I will keep it a last one because I do realize that we are obviously cracking to this video which is pretty mental but at the same time it's all good what age did I first start competing at? So I done my first show when I was 19 years old, which was the NABA Scotland in 2017. That was actually my first ever year competing, obviously. I was 19 years old and then I competed a week later at the BNBF Scottish, in which I was obviously, I had just turned 19 before I'd done the NABA Scotland. Therefore, my full first year, I was 19 and then I competed again when I was 20. I competed again when I was 21, competed again when I was 22, and then I have took the year off of being 23, and then obviously this year is my kind of main comeback to obviously the stage, um, after I've just taken the big year off, and I am now 24, so my first my first age um, when I did compete was 19, but what I don't recommend is I don't recommend people just jumping in um, too soon, like I, looking back, I've obviously got no regrets, but at the same time, I wouldn't favour um, you just jumping into a show too quick like the stage is always going to be there so make sure you're ready more than anything else make sure you do have enough muscle especially whenever you are you're you're dieting down you don't want to diet down and have nothing you always want to make sure that you are prioritized and how much muscle you've got especially the younger generation the the, the stage is always going to be there you've got plenty of time please do not rush it take your time and, and make sure you are ready but i'm just going to leave it here guys um i do have a little physique update at the end of the video so stay tuned i move on to my last and final exercise here and i kind of cover it tell you why i'm doing it tell you what i'm doing and that's that so i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and i will see you guys in the next one wanted on the the gym pin so i could attach two d handles to it and do like a rear delt row but sometimes when we come in they're already attached and like you don't have to go about finding clips or finding d handles that aren't snapped and tonight's not one of them nights so i'm not going to go about the gym trying to find d-handles and clips and fucking hooks and just waste like five minutes of my session doing that because i'll cool down i'll lose my pump and then i'll get raging so we'll just go with a straight bar but we are moving on to well realistically finishing on beer delts so i do like to throw in beer delts with my shoulder sessions and back sessions and um, just because they are pretty much one of them body parts that can take a little bit extra volume over the course of the week and recover very well and i mean they're another exercise that you don't really need to take that heavy and um, because Whenever you're training rear delts, the main goal, the, the, the vital goal with training rear delts is connection because they are very hard to connect with, with. And if you don't connect with them very well, then there's no really any point in doing a rear delt exercise. So we're going for the straight bar here. We're just going rear delt rows. So it's essentially just a pull down, but we're keeping elbows flared and we're attacking the rears um, at every cost, but we're nearly finished.